Uh, thanks for attending this morning. Um, we're here today to again provide another update regarding uh, tactical activity that's occurred in relation to Operation Eclipse. We previously stated that Operation Eclipse identified key players in the criminal syndicates that are actually active in the South Australian community. And SAFO has continued to have a broad response to this criminal activity. We're having a whole SAFO response and we're currently using resources in both the metropolitan and rural areas. Our objective is to dismantle these criminal syndicates involved in illicit tobacco and prevent further ongoing violence and arsons within the community. We've recently increased our presence on key transit routes into South Australia and that with one key focus and that's to prevent the illicit tobacco being moved into South Australia for sale within that illicit market. This strategy has resulted in identifying three trucks travelling to South Australia in the past three weeks for which we've had significant seizures. In the past three weeks, um, this, supported by other investigation strategies, is continuing to make it increasingly more difficult for these syndicates to operate in South Australia and establish. At about 8.40am yesterday, Heavy Vehicle Enforcement Section stopped and searched a light truck on the southeastern freeway at Tail and Bend. They had cause to search that vehicle and after a search they located approximately 480 kilos of loose tobacco and over 470,000 cigarettes. The seizure is estimated to be in excess of $600,000 from that vehicle. A 30-year-old man from Victoria has been charged with money laundering and unlawful possession. He's been remanded in custody and will appear in the Adelaide Magistrates Court today. In addition to yesterday's seizure, on the 23rd of October, Murray Bridge patrols stopped and searched a rental truck Princess Highway, Monteith. That truck was driven by a 37 year old man from Victoria and a 34 year old man from New South Wales. Illicit tobacco was also located in that truck and it is estimated that it's in the value of hundreds of thousands. The investigation in relation to that seizure is ongoing. On the 3rd of October, Port Augusta patrols had cause to stop and search a light vehicle at Port Augusta. They located in that truck what we describe as a tobacco pop-up shop. That truck had in it tobacco signage, shop fittings, priceless displays, and tobacco products valued at about $150,000. At that scene, we arrested two men, a 32-year-old man and a 44-year-old man, both from Queensland. Both those men have been charged with money laundering. They have been remanded in custody and will appear next in court on the 6th of November at Port Augusta. Due to the nature of these investigations, Serious Organised Crime Investigation Branch and Financial and Cyber Crime Investigation Branch have taken carriage of the money laundering investigations. As stated, we currently have a key focus placed on transit routes in South Australia to identify trucks, buses, cars that are carrying illicit tobacco in South Australia and we intend on disrupting any criminal activity of that nature. <clears throat> the police in those areas are fully cognizant of what's occurring and at every opportunity they will lawfully stop and search vehicles that are involved in this transportation. This with other investigational activity will continue to disrupt and prevent the violence we have seen and the arsons that have occurred. I remind those involved that South Australian Police will pursue criminal charges at every opportunity and will take every opportunity to enforce the full extent of the confiscation legislation to seize assets of those involved in this tobacco trade. I'm asking today for the public, if anyone has knowledge of any persons involved in the illicit transport of tobacco into South Australia, please contact police. And also, if they are aware of any locations where illicit tobacco is currently being stored, to contact police. And if they can contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. I'm now taking any questions. How would you describe the level of police resources that are going into now manning these transit routes? Yeah. Over the last period with, with Operation Clips, we've clearly identified the key players in these syndicates. We're aware of how they're getting this product in South Australia. And now we have, we've seen the patrols, we've seen heavy vehicle enforcement unit. There's been some excellent work conducted by the members in those areas to stop, search and seize uh, these quantities. This is a major disruption to the market. Do you think that people wanting to buy illegal tobacco will find it harder? There's no doubt. If you 
have seizures of this nature that it's going to significantly disrupt what's occurring in South Australia. Um, the seizure at Port Augusta, where it's a pop-up shop, will obviously prevent that syndicate from establishing a, a, you know, a retail outlet in the city. But Speaking of you know, Port Augusta, you know, can you give us a bit of a picture of what the situation is like in the regions in terms of the number of shops that are popping up and you know, how much police resources are sort of having to, to keep an eye on not just the metropolitan Adelaide but the regions as well? Yeah, it's, it's clearly evident that we do have um, list tobacco shops establishing in the regions. We are working with the uh, officers in charge of those regions to ensure that um, members from the uh, exposed metropolitan area and the specialist branches can support them. And um, pressure will be placed on those persons operating in those areas to prevent them from actually getting a foothold in those uh, country regions. How would you say this operation is running considering we haven't seen an arson attack in, I think, more than a week now? Yeah, it's. Be fair to say that we've taken a multifaceted approach. Um, it's, as I said, SAFO is committed to the resourcing. We've seen multiple areas now having an impact on the illicit tobacco trade. We've, we've had patrols, heavy vehicle enforcement. We've seen specialist crime areas involved. And um, we're fully aware that we need to maintain this pressure to make this a hostile environment for these illicit tobacco shops operating. Could this be the start of the end? Do you, are you hopeful of that? I think um, I'm optimistic that what we're doing is working, but we need to maintain the pressure to ensure that we don't have further events of violence and or arsons within the community. You seem to be taking a different approach as well, using sort of the, the laundering and confiscation laws. Is that sort of a way to plug the holes until we get stronger tobacco legislation? No, I think um, if you look at the offences that have been committed, the reason people are dealing in illicit tobacco is clearly for the profit. And I make it clear to those involved that we will continue to enforce the full extent of the confiscation legislation because we seek to seize their assets, whether that be their home, their vehicles, their boats. Um, we intend to disrupt that money flow. What do you think this will do for people that are actually selling tobacco legally? Um, if people stop buying these illegal products? It's clear to us that um, the criminal that we're looking at is those who are involved in the illicit trade. Um, those that are regulated and licensed retailers, um, it's, it's really, really important that they can go about their business and conduct their normal retail business as they did prior to this illicit tobacco trade coming to South Australia. Could you estimate how much money they're losing with this illegal trade, how much are they? No, I couldn't comment on that. Kelly, you've said before that there were three key crime syndicates behind the trade, the two of them from interstate. Is that still the case? Yeah, that's clearly evident. And if you look at these trucks that are coming in, we've had arrests of persons and or occupants in those vehicles from Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, which clearly indicates to us that those interstate syndicates are trying to get foothold in South Australia. How concerned are police about this whole situation with the illegal tobacco trade? You know, and how could you just give me a comparison of how it might compare with other criminal activity around illegal goods such as drugs? Like, is it sort of right up there now? What I'd say to that is that wherever violence and or arson forms part of the criminality to enable people to get a foothold or establish themselves in a the market, South Australian police will take that extremely serious and thus you've seen the response we've had with the resources that have been put into Operation Police. How many arrests have we seen now? So to date, there's been 15 arrests. And can you tell us any more about the person that will be appearing in court today in Victoria? Are they a, a key player, a significant player at all? Or? Um, the investigation's in its infancy, so we're trying to establish what role they do have. What about out of those 15 arrests, are, are there sort of, you know, um, strong connections to these syndicates that you're hoping it might help crack the crime gangs? Yeah, it, it's clear that the people involved have connections to the key syndicates we're looking at and um, we're developing a better and better picture each day of 
those involved and how they're operating in the South Australian environment. Is it too presumptuous to say you're winning the war? Well, as said before, I'm optimistic that what we're doing currently um, is disrupting the activity, but this is going to be something that needs to be ongoing to ensure that these groups can't establish within the South Australian market. Do you have a timeline of when you want you know, this to be quashed or under control? Uh, no, we don't. And um, we're working with partner agencies, um, we're working with interstate law enforcement, and we'll continue to monitor the activity uh, nationally as to how we need to continue with this investigation. There's been kind of calls for authorities to have a national approach. I understand there is a, a working group now that's been established. Can you give us a bit of an understanding of that working, that national working group and how everybody's working together? I won't speak to the working group specifically, but um, the cooperation between government, non-government agencies, law enforcement today has been excellent and um, we're having daily dialogue with some of these other agencies to ensure um, we have a full understanding of the current environment. Great. Thanks everyone, we've got some photos. Okay, um, <coughs> this is some seizures that occurred at Port Acosta um, in what we would suggest. So can we just hold up one second? I don't have a microphone that can hear you there. At the moment, I'm not, I'm not gonna move Should we put the yeah, mic on this on him? Oh, yes, uh, would you mind wearing a microphone for this? It's just going to be going through the photos. Uh, look, if you're going to be talking, it would be nice to just so it'll take a minute. Thank you.